Tonight, our study is on alcohol drinking. And there are two avenues of this subject. There are some who say don't. And there are some who say go ahead. It's okay. Just a tad bit. Just a little bit. I mean, after all, didn't Jesus turn the water into wine? And what we're going to do is we're going to look at what the biblical lesson is for alcohol. And we're going to seek God in the King James 1611 Bible about alcohol. And we're not going to hold any personal opinions. Because there are people out there, there are pastors out there, there are Sunday school teachers, there are Christians out there that they have their sin. And they will take the context of Scripture and twist it so they can continue their sin and having God allow them without rightly dividing the word of God. Now, we start off, although Paul drank wine frequently, it was hardly the wine of today present. So in other words, the wine that Paul drank was not the wine that you go into a liquor store or a grocery store and you purchase off the shelf. Let's get that fact straight first. There are two different kinds of wine. And then there are other kinds of wine that the Bible speaks about we're not going to get into. There's a new wine. New wine is the fruit of the grape, grape juice. Fermented wine is an intoxicating wine. And we run into the Lord's Supper. Do we have intoxicating wine that would not represent the pure, holy blood of God, Acts 20, 28? Or do we stay with the new blood, the new wine of holiness? And it's your personal. You want to sin? Go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. But let it be known, if, if I am correct, and I believe I am, and you say otherwise or teach otherwise or believe otherwise, you're the one that's at fault, not me. Throughout the Greco-Roman era, some of the Greeks diluted wine with seawater because they thought pure wine was unpleasant and harsh. They didn't like grape juice. So what they did was seawater, and you've heard this expression before, they watered down the drinks with salt water, seawater. So when you're going to say, hey, well, Paul drank and, and, you know, and wine and all that, it was watered down. And friend, I drank for a long time. When I would go into the bar and realize that the bartender was watering down my drink, that was upsetting. But that's what we're looking at now. We're not looking at pure strength. We're looking at a watered down. Because they didn't like grape juice. They didn't like non-alcoholic. Non they wanted the good stuff. They thought it was unpleasant and harsh. And again, in Italy, they sell hot wine in the winter. They take it and they heat it up. It's cold. They had other drinks. They had water. They had other things, a means of, of vegetable juices and, and fruit juices. 
But there are people out there who want, I'm going to sin and I'm going to enjoy my sin. And I'm going to have the Bible say I can sin. Not when you deal with me, brother, you're not. As we go to Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 8. You knew we were going to get the scriptures. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, so this is God speaking. You would think that God knows what he's talking about. I do. And I think if God speaks, I think we all pay attention. And in verse 8, this is the Lord Jehovah God speaking to Aaron, the priest, the high priest. Do not drink wine nor strong drink. All right, you see the two classifications? There's wine, there's strong drink. There is grape juice, and there's intoxicating. The Bible puts forth two kinds of juices. What you want is you want the alcoholic wine. You don't want the grape juice on the shelf. You want the non-alcoholic champagne so it would taste like alcohol. Thou nor thy sons with thee, priests, when you go into the tabernacle of the congregation, when you go to the tabernacle, when you go to temple, and you are in the temple of God, there is no, there is no alcohol. There is no wine. Wine, strong drink. That ye may put difference between holy and unholy, between unclean and clean. So when we're looking at alcohol, we are looking at wine, we are looking at strong drink, we are looking at holy and unholy, unclean and clean. I think this discussion, I think this Bible study is worthy to be examined. And I think if your pastor, your teacher, your Christian friends, I think they allow alcohol, they, they, they will accept alcohol, they drink alcohol, I think they need to be thrown out of the church. Church discipline. Okay? So the very fact is that it is the duty to discern what is holy and not holy. What is clean and filthy. That they might instruct the people of the laws of the Lord. The priests were not allowed to consume wine or an strong drink. Let's lay that down. Okay, that's the priest. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. That was the priest. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31, verse 4. It is not for kings, O Lamel. It is not for kings to drink wine, A. Nor for princes strong drink, B. Least they drink, forget the law, and prevent the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink. On him that's ready to perish, and wine unto those that are heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Okay, so the priests were forbidden, kings are forbidden 
because it distorted judgment of the rulers. You don't want a body of rulers to be set up in a government and to have their senses distorted. You don't want to have your priests teaching the people when their duty is to instruct holy, unholy, clean, and unclean. Alcohol will prevert that judgment. Revelation. The book of Revelation. Chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Verse 6. And has made us Christian. Christian. Christian made us kings, Proverbs 31, and priests, Leviticus 10. Unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So Christians are called kings and priests. Scripture is scripture. We are not to have our senses, our instruction, or our judgment distorted by alcohol. And anybody, anybody gets up and say alcohol is okay, you have perverted as a Christian, as a king, as a priest, Offering prayers up and in intercessions for people. You have gone to that which is unholy and unclean and perverted judgment. First Peter two nine. First Peter two nine. Again, there are people out there. I heard a pastor say, "Oh, it's okay." There are people out there say, you know, you're not drink, you're not drink, you're not drinking. Well, listen, my friend. Outside the Bible, I was telling my daughter the other day, I have harsh memory of a drunken father and my mother having to put up with his drunkenness. It ruins family. It's a waste of money. It's stupid. You act like an idiot. I know I drank. I drank many years. I had one time as I was at a party. I was intoxicated. Other people were intoxicated. And someone took a loaded gun and put it to the temple of my head and was about to pull the trigger. I thank God that God intervened. I've done a many a lot of stupid things when I was intoxicated. Thank God, God got me out. So 1 Peter 2 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. There it is again. A holy nation run by a king, not president. A particular people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You gotta be a witness to others, saved and lost. Don't prevert your judgment. Grape juice is just as good. 
apple juice, orange juice, water. We have many, many options of our beverages today than alcohol that was diluted with seawater. I can't even imagine what that tastes like. So again, we are born again believers, kings and priests. Leviticus 10, Proverbs 31 says no. Now back to Proverbs 23. Proverbs is a wise book. I don't know how often your church is open. Proverbs. Proverbs 23, 29. Ready? Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has babbling? <laughs> Who has wounds without cause? They wake up in the hospital, drunk. They wake up from an automobile accident, drunk. Who has redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, here's the wine, That looks like a forbidden. That looks like a no-no. They that go to seek mixed wine. Oh, that's what I told you before. They take the wine, they dilute it. Watered down drink. And the hard stuff. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red. Don't even... Don't drink it. Don't even look at it. Drink it? No. Don't even look at it. If you're in the grocery store and there's that aisle, don't even look at it. Keep going. Get out of that aisle. It's like pornography. Don't look at it. When it gives his color in the cup, that it moves itself all right. Ooh, sounds like it's alive. Sounds like a red dragon. At the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Ooh, pain, suffering. The devil, serpent. Thy eyes shall behold strange women. They use models to sell their, their boobs. Thine heart shall utter perverse things. You talk foolish. You talk stupid. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, back and forth, back and forth. Oh, oh, I'm not going to get sick. Oh, Mr. Toilet Bowl. Oh, I love you, Mr. Toilet Bowl. Oh, no. Oh, oh. As that lieth upon the top of a mast, you're on a ship. I tell you, seawater. Oh, oh, I'm not going to get sick. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to get sick. They have stricken me, shalt thou say. I was not sick. I didn't get sick. I didn't get hungover. I don't get hangovers. They have beaten me. I felt it not. I have no feeling. When I shall awake, I will seek it again. I'll go right back to the camp. I'll go right back to the bottle. I'll go right back to the bar. I'll go right back to drinking. What clear case can you get against alcohol in the Bible? Plain and simple. Plain and simple. There are warnings. 1 Corinthians 6, New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And they'll tell you, oh, don't be so hard. It's okay. 
1 Corinthians 6, 12. All things are lawful unto me. Okay, I can do whatever I want to do. The government says you can buy alcohol. The government says you can drink alcohol. The government has set rules, regulations, and laws about alcohol. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So, I can drink. I can drink if I wanted to. It has been established alcohol is a terrible physical repercussions. In addition to grief, arguments, babble, wounds, wandering eyes, and perverted hearts. It ought not to be abused by Christians. It ought to be left alone. You don't need any more hardship or anger or troubles or wounds or loss of money, a weak marriage. Terror of the children. A terrible employee. Luke chapter 21. Luke 21. Luke 21. 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest any time, any time, your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. That's to the excess. Drunkenness. Okay? Is that, well, you know, I drink, but I don't get intoxicated. I just, I know what my limits are. Huh? Okay. But we've already seen warnings and precautions to abstain. The only reason why the government sells it, makes it legal, is, is tax revenue. Prostitution is not legalized yet because they can't tax it. Friend, if they could tax prostitution, it'd be legal. They're legalizing marijuana today because it can be taxed. They don't care about you. They don't care. So Jesus Christ himself, with the mindset, cautions us with the word intoxication. And I know Christians out there, they're going to hide from that word. They're going to say, well, I don't get drunk. I don't drink to get drunk. Blah, 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 blah. Romans 14. Romans 14. 21. It is good neither to eat flesh nor drink wine, there it is, nor anything whereby my brother stumbled or is offended or is made weak, all right? I believe alcohol is wrong. I believe alcohol is a sin. And if you're going to open up intoxicating liquid, beverage, you have offended me And that's wrong. You ought to know my convictions. You ought to know where I stand. That 
what you do, you have the perfect law of liberty. But what is your liberty when it comes to another Christian? Weak in the faith. Maybe a Christian is coming out of alcoholism. And he sees you drinking. He sees you come out of the bar. And he, oh, okay, man, I can do it. And then he goes back and destroys his life. Because of you. Because of you. First Corinthians 8. First Corinthians 8. Those are out of the Bible. Ask your pastor. Ask your team. Where does it say in the Bible you can drink? We'll get to that. First Corinthians 8, 9. But take heed by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Okay? You got a worldly Christian. You got a newly saved Christian. You got a newborn babe in Christ. You have all liberty. Don't lead them astray. You want to drink alcohol? Drink it in your house. Have it all you want. Don't drink it. Don't show it in the presence of other Christians. Verse 12, same chapter. But when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. So if you lead a Christian astray because you want to sin, you give a Christian false hopes You take a Christian and you lead him out of the right way. You have sinned against Jesus Christ. Chapter 5, verse 11. Chapter 5, verse 11. First Corinthians. Such were some of you but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Look at verse 10. Neither thieves, nor coaches, nor drunkards. You're not even to have fellowship with a drunkard. You're not even to have fellowship with somebody who indulges in alcohol. So if they're to stay away from you, you are to keep that away from them. It's just like, you know, you, you, you go somewhere and you light up a cigarette and you blow it in their face. That's rude. That's what you're doing with the alcohol. You're just blowing it right in their face, right in their conscience. You should not hang out with an inebriated believer. 1 Timothy 3. 1 Scripture. 1 Timothy 3. 3. Three, three. It says about the bishop. Verse 1. Nor give to wine nor striker, not greedy, filthy liqueur, but patient. He that rules his own house. It is forbidden. It is forbidden. New Testament, Paul write into Timothy, it is forbidden for your preacher, your bishop, to drink wine. He can find something else to drink. Grape juice. Acts 
apple juice, orange juice, water, carbonated beverage like soda. Look at verse 8, same chapter. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double tongue, not given to much wine. The deacons can have wine. I read that. The pastor cannot. So if you got a church that's got intoxicating liquor for your Lord's Supper, and the pastor takes part in that, the bishop, he's violating the scriptures. But the deacons, they can have some. Not much. Some. Not overindulging. Not intoxication. I read it to you. First Corinthians 6. First Corinthians 6. Verse 10. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards. That plain and simple? That's the same thing that Jesus told us in Luke 21. Galatians 5.21. Galatians 5.21 Envies, murders, drunkenness, revilings, such are like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You're in your drunkenness? You're not going to get a kingdom reign. You're not going to be a king. Kings are not to drink it. Alcohol will ruin your reign in the millennium with Christ. Ephesians 5.18 Ephesians 5.18 Be not drunk with wine. Where in the ex excess, all right, don't drink too much of it. Unless you're the pastor. But be filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, capital S. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, not country music, not rock and roll. Not intoxicating melodies. Keep yourself sober. But look, it said, it said, not drunk in the excess. Don't drink into intoxication. I have a little. Why would you have a little? How about just have a little cancer? How about have a little problem with your blood pressure? What about your spouse having a little affair? What about your children having a little marijuana? Just a little. That don't sound right, does it? In Smith's Bible Dictionary, 747, boiling grapes into a syrup was one way to prevent them from fermenting, like a grape juice. Like a grape juice. In fact, the product was referred to as wine by ancient historians. So is your wine boiled? 
to a preserve. The wines of antiquity were not, were more like syrups. Many of them were not intoxicants. They didn't have alcohol. It was a syrup. Like you take grape and you put it on your toes. Another method to keep grapes from fermenting involved placing new wine in new wineskin. The ancient Roman writer Columia, knowing that grape juice would not ferment if kept cool under 50 degrees and oxygen free, writes as follows. Your grape juice will always be sweet as when it was new. This proceeds. After you apply the press to the grapes, take the newest, most fresh juice, put it in a new container, bung it up, cover it up carefully, and pitch test any water should enter. Then sink it in a cistern or a pond or cold water and allow no part of the amphiori to remain above the surface after 40 days take it out and it will remain sweet for a year that's not intoxicating that's sweet wine that's wine made not to get you intoxicated Matthew 9:17 Matthew 9, 17. I advise not to drink. Stay away from it. Stay away from it like the flu. 9, 17. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the wine break and the wine runs out and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved and kept sweet, not intoxicated. So what Jesus is telling us there, he's not telling you how to make intoxicated liquor. He's telling you how to make sweet wine. Different from strong drink. The rabbis could not sanctify wine that was brewed and served unmixed since it was deemed filthy and barbarian. That's what we talked about before. Clean and unclean. John 2. John chapter 2, verse 11. John 2, 11. This began the miracles that Jesus in Cana of Galilee manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. All right, this is where Jesus turned the water into wine. Read that chapter. Mark the place where Jesus drank it. He didn't drink it anywhere. Look at verse 10. He said to him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, for thou hast kept the good wine unto now, the sweet wine I just read to you. They may have had the watered down stuff, but Jesus gave them the sweet stuff. Jesus gave them the non-intoxicating that he did not drink. He changed the water to wine. He didn't make alcohol. That's the miracle. First Timothy five. 
1 Timothy 5, 23. Drink no longer water. Oh, you can read water. But use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. It's a medication. It's a syrup. He was told to take a small amount medically. It's like a prescription for a painkiller. Your cough medicine, some of it, has wine, alcohol. Some of your mouthwashes have alcohol. I know I've dealt with homeless people. They will go buy mouthwash and drink it because of his alcohol content. And I showed you scripture. Okay, yeah, it is permittable in some cases. In some cases, it's not permitted. And you figure if God and Jesus and the Apostle Paul would have us to refrain. I think it'd be quite wise to open a bottle of water, have an apple juice, a tomato juice, 